Mathematics is looking at the world, identifying mathematical aspects to it, and trying to figure out what's going on. So it's, it's a very explorative, creative kind of process. Mathematics is probably the, the single largest artifact that's been built by our species, by our civilization. Well, there's no branch of uh, science that is so cumulative, cumulative in a sense, uh, in nature as mathematics is, outside of mathematics. Uh, mathematics is in the center of the current scientific and uh, technological revolution and evolution. Mathematics is a great achievement of, of humankind and I think it's very important for, uh, for us to communicate that to the next generation. I mean, the idea is to have a central repository of mathematical knowledge, so theorems and definitions that you can sort of look it up online. It's basically the best of everything. So the mathematics is totally pure uh, and you have all the computational things that you have in these other systems and you have a nice integration of, of text where uh, you have the mathematical paper that you as a human can re read and relate to but the statements in that paper match the statements in the formal developments and it's all hanging together in a nice way. Ideal would be that uh, we all agree on how uh, mathematics is to be represented by computers but that is a, far, a goal that is far away. Really the first step is uh, if you're going to have the computer help you do mathematics is uh, having a language, having the right language, having a language which you can communicate the mathematics to uh, the computer uh, and uh, having representations that the computer can then work with. How to represent mathematics in a computer in such a way that it's very easy for the human to interact with, with a computer. The computer understands exactly what the human means and we, we don't even have the representation language for that. I think this is impossible to accomplish in a satisfactory way without actually improving systematically on existing mathematical notation. If your system comes back and tells you that 2 plus 2 is equal to 5, well, unless you've said what 2 is and what plus is uh, and, you know, and so on, without a semantics, um, you're not even wrong. The phrase is often attributed to Wolfgang Pauli, who was uh, critical of mathematical papers that were imprecise. People are coming together with different foundational attitudes and views. Uh, we're getting a sense of what the tensions are. The mathematicians are rather conservative. And so uh, computer science gives a lot of possibilities. And we need somehow to convince mathematicians that it's useful, that it's of help for them. Brian is a professor, was a professor, he recently d died. Uh, of mathematics in, who introduced the field of interactive theorem proving. He was the first guy who had the insight that uh, computers really make this possible. No one believed him at the time. Over the past 10 years, much of my research has been to try to figure out how computers could be used to express mathematics effectively. And uh, in that time, I have acquired this, uh, the conviction that this is indeed possible. I got curious about to what extent we can make all of mathematics, including very pure areas of mathematics, somehow computational. This is probably the best time to try to take a large corpus of mathematics and convert it to a formal precise form. And so I was interested in kind of collecting some of the uh, leading math and maybe meta-math people to understand more about what's possible in these directions. This workshop is on the semantics of mathematics, which is an important, extremely crucial element of what we hope will become this global math library. It's this very interesting uh, workshop on the semantic representation of mathematics, which is of interest uh, essentially for every mathematician. There are people, for example, who say that Wikipedia has been the greatest public good in the history of, of mankind. Let's think about where is this consensus about, uh, about technically what we can accomplish and how we can accelerate discoveries in mathematics. And let's work together in that kind of a public interest spirit. And so the attraction of dependent type theory is that you really have one language that does it all. There are basically two aspects. There's the translation of informal statements into formal ones, and then there's the translation of uh, your intuitive idea of the proof into a formal sequence of logical steps. So those, to some extent, can be done in isolation. My talk was titled Big Proofs, Little Math, 
and it tried to convey the idea that small mundane mathematics makes a big difference to how one can be able to achieve large formalization. I got that idea through, but mostly the audience was very enthusiastic about the actual size of the things I'd formalized. So your hierarchy of definitions succeeds in making the representation of a particular page be comparable in size to the... the for, the, uh, for the statements. People who don't know this technology cannot imagine that this is possible. Indeed, there was much discussion during my talk. It's not surprising that the statement in talk looks like the original statement in some sense. Actually, actually it is. <laughs> <laughs> the mathematicians think the probability of error is so small that uh, although it would be awful if there were an error, it's not worth it to check the proof formally. We might compare this with the thinking of those who don't buy health insurance because they're healthy. You answered Hilbert's tenth problem. What implications does this have for mathematics and computability? Well, is, if to answer in a few words, just saving time of mathematicians. You see, Hilbert asked for the algorithm to decide the final equations, and many mathematicians actually tried to find such a method. But what I proved is it does not exist. So all these efforts were in vain, and this result can be compared to the law of condensation of energy. Now that we know this law, nobody would spend his or her time by inventing perpetuum mobile. I don't perform mathematics so much, I compose it. And I don't uh, compose music so much, I perform it. Of course, understanding is the goal of all sciences, but we are lucky in mathematics, then there is this zero-one criteria, then whether you have a proof or not. Uh, so of course, at the end, a proof comes, but understanding might be much more important. So I programmed the whole system to keep track of all the proof steps that are needed to get to 1 plus 1 is 2. And I color coded them because there are different proof steps. Hall has 10 proof steps, so I had 10 colors. And then I put them in the shape of uh, a long play record. Is that uh, how you call this in English? LP. An LP. The main challenge to actually getting to formalize a large body of mathematics is to get enough people on board. As far as I'm concerned, this workshop was a big success. So uh, were people from, very distinguished people actually, from, from several different communities, from computational mathematics, from uh, actual mathematics as it's practiced by pure mathematicians, and from uh, the proving and uh, theorem-oriented community. It's been very valuable and terrific to see the Sloan Foundation taking leadership. We're cognitively bounded agents and there's only a limit, there's a limit to how much we can keep in mind at, at the time, how much we can remember. Um, but what we do is we try to develop concepts and ways that extend our cognitive reach. And in that respect, the computer is a game changer. It's not an exaggeration to say that mechanized mathematics has the potential to transform how mathematics is both learned and practiced. And move on to higher and higher levels of inventing mathematics. In mathematics, that's what we do. We just find ways to think better and think more efficiently.